Oh, and we're up. That is one of my like favorite things about what they've done in WoW is the stay a while and listen option. Oh, oh yeah, yeah to like actually cool. get lore. Yeah. Mm. That is pretty cool. I'm gonna restart this. And it's nice it's that it's all voice cool. acted. It's not like a whole bunch of reading, mm. which I struggle with. It's like they took the notes from uh that one add-on that like AI voice yes. acted everything. And they were like, Oh, maybe we should just like make it so we actually put some voice actors to work. Yes. For longer I, than a cutscene. I will say I think they watched the day nine experience and <laughs> were immediately like we need to fix this for sure for sure because uh, oh. yeah that was hard to watch that was a rough time guys. i just started watching him do the the launch did, did y'all see that he did the war yeah. within launch yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he's like i bought the game and marketing at some point decided to do this thing where it's like you'll we'll sell you the game but you'll have no idea how to play it <laughs> well, it's like what do i do what a what a great way to start guys what a great way to start oh um so quick thing um nice little add-on little section that we're doing i yeah. know i think i may have mentioned this before but what are y'all drinking before we're drinking i have long branch I... i'm drinking the new riff malted rye wait do i have that I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah, I'm the only one who doesn't have it because my store has everything from New Riff except for the malted rye. Wait, including the single barrel select? Yep. We had a single barrel select there. Eric, you remember that you time? didn't buy it? I didn't buy it yet. No, 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 no. I will get it at some point. Okay. Eric, you okay. remember that time? I, I was buying a lot of other stuff while I was there. That's then. fair. That's fair. <laughs> There's a time that we were at a pizza place and I needed to summon like the waitress or something like that. So I made a yes. tower of salt. Summon you made a waitress. tower of salt. Like, I, I stacked everything up really high so that someone would come because we were sitting there There's for a video there. Hey, are you Someone. bored? Hey, are you bored? Yeah. Hey, are you yeah. are, What's wrong? But uh, <laughs> I, I have a new summoning tower, and that summoning tower is just I'm stocking up bottles of new riff until eventually my best friend shows up because he just like see he feels it, it like pulls them in like the Dragon Balls. I just gotta get like seven <laughs> new riffs. <laughs> <laughs> then he shows up, and they all leave, and they scatter across the planet. And we're like, crap! <laughs> I'm like, I didn't ah! fly here. I, get... I don't have a return Dude, trip. What am I doing here? I just saw Vegeta's new form like an oh? hour ago. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 How do you feel okay, about he, it? He looks nuts. And then at one point I realized, wait, that looks like Super Saiyan 3 face. Because he's got yeah. the like the, the, the eyebrows. The missing eyebrows. Yeah, oh, man. sorry. Yep. Spoilers, Ash, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I doubt she's gonna yeah, really whatever. like pull that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's wild. It's like it's not it's not a it's not a huge. Giveaway. I don't know but what yeah. color his hair though is is yet though. I think it's supposed to be. Purple. That's what I was guessing. I was like, I bet it's purple, yeah. but I didn't. I, think I didn't purple. read a part yet that I... says what color it would be. But have you seen? That's what I think it is. Uh, so wait, what all have you caught up on? I literally he just did it in his in his fight against uh cereal. Or yeah. no, it's a cerulean. Yeah. Graham. Yeah. No, it's Graham. <laughs> Granola. Granola. Yeah, Granola. something like that. His yeah, name's yeah. Granola. It's it's a it's He's a, a cerulean. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Dude, that shit is so corny. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wild. Hmm. Oh, anyway. Um. But yeah, so today we're it. not drinking the 16th Flaviar. Oh, because tell I me. just oh. went to grab it. And it looks like I've got two 15s. Tell them our feelings about it. Pretty man. both disappointed and not disappointed. Not disappointed because I really like 15, so I get to try it again. But now I got to contact them and hopefully I can get 16 this late in the game so that we can all try it together. Otherwise, y'all are doing a double someday. Should be fine, right? Yeah. It should be fine. Yeah. Ugh. I'm sorry, man. It's all good. But it's a funny error. We do we do have Eric. You're you are stuttering again. But, I know. Um, I don't know what's going on today, audience. My, no worries, my guy. It is well, my my camera apparently, and every time I restart it, it's good for some number of. It goes. Again. Yeah. Did you use it recently? Interesting. No, I I didn't change anything with it at all. So. 
Well, let's capitalize on the time that we do have. Um, Just keep gentlemen, restarting it. What are we drinking? Seventeen. What, are we, what, are, what number yeah. are we doing? <laughs> so we're do, we're doing number seventeen. We're Android to seventeen. 16. Here we go. At some point. Yes. Yeah. Nobody wanted to mess. You know. Just sit around and just like chill with birds in this episode. No. Right? We're going to no come birds. back to that episode. Chill with birds? Yeah. Android 16 would always just oh, sit. Oh, it's 16. I forgot. Uh, wow. Uh, I completely I was, I was. <laughs> Eric, what a pull, man. Uh, come on, guys. You are truly the Dragon Ball fan today. Dude, I've been watching that show. Uh, Probably longer than any other anime, to be fair. So it is the starter for an entire generation. Mm. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if it was my the first one I watched. Um, but it's definitely the one that I'm like still watching that I watched when I was like six or seven or whenever it was so fair enough fair enough i was really young when i started that do we want to compete with this or do we want to just like kind of enjoy this sucker we can do an enjoy day yeah let's do it i feel like day. It, i feel like competition is like yeah okay but i feel like Holy it's just time Jesus. to chill out with the boys yeah let's just enjoy this one so this is one of our our, our one of our favorites although it's kind of hit or miss Whoa. for y'all that so is this fragrant is the Copper Fox Rye Whiskey. We're sitting at about uh, 90 proof. So Ooh. a little bit low on the proof side. But this is a rye whiskey. This is so floral. So it should be spicy, peppery. Uh, a little... What does the book say? Cinnamon. What does the book say? Tropical. That's Ooh. what constitutes tropical? Interesting. I get... No, 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 no. This is not. You're on. 16. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong you're on one. 16. I'm looking at the wrong Remember, one. Look at me. 17 spoiling. today. Okay, 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 okay. Pepper is the biggest yeah. one. You know, okay, I, I get a little bit raisin. of that pepper. I get raisin. I get a little bit of that nuttiness. I don't know if I would pick it out as almonds. But... I would not say almonds. I would but say I do get almond. like a nutty flavor, almost like a. Um, like a salted peanuts, boiled peanuts type of uh, thing. I could see that. I think yeah. I get peat. I so can catch the peat. I see where you're getting the peat. I think that's it's a little less peaty and more of that salty nuttiness, peppery nuttiness. Like it really does have. It almost smells like a carnival. A little Is bit. that more so like the apple then, really? The peat kind of being twisted by the pepper and then also the uh, nut I could see flavor. that. This 100% gives me carnival vibes, like in my head, when I'm thinking about this. I think I'm like you a... You have very different carnival. Like a experience. festival. <laughs> yeah. It's just or... like what? <laughs> And he just walks into a carnival and it smells like this. And he's like, yes, <laughs> my childhood. <laughs> well, think, so I'm, I'm, like, I'm getting like the caramel, the apple. Oh, no, I know like what you're talking apple about. Type of deal. And then I'm getting yeah. like boiled peanuts. Okay. Uh, okay. Saltiness, a little bit of umami with um, nutty flavors, but with that like over salted the, smell type of deal. I would agree. Like okay. it, I would agree on two fronts. One is either you're actually at like a... Uh, what do you call it with all the clowns and the yeah, yeah. not carnival. a carnival but a circus, circus. or yes. two yeah, yeah, yeah. like a... you're at a real carnival owned by gypsies and they're smoking and you can smell their cigarettes all over the place but for me and probably for nat funnel cakes deep fried stuff doused in sugar is carnival smell i see i see it's like i'm not getting incredible. that i am definitely getting the like if you went to a state fair fair is probably better a fair okay like a state yeah. fair but not in the sweet section yeah in the section that has like all the meats it's got, and peanuts and, and it's got that. the uh the hay the maize made out of hay bales and yeah. the, some of those hay bales got some some yep. some horse and cow shit on them a hundred per well, well okay. i don't know about you that, don't smell but... the horse shit <laughs> You don't smell the horse shit. No, I don't. Okay. Maybe okay. that's what just because I have my window open over here. <laughs> Cheers. We're gonna have to go to a fair one day. Bro, Cheers. you have it's a thirty. You having dirty cows, thirty? Man. Dirty thirty. 
Almost got a fourth cow tonight. Mm. You would have had okay. a herd and then some. Mm -hmm. You technically mm -hmm. could have had two herds. Mm -hmm. Two herds? You heard? <laughs> okay. I taste the hay on this one. <laughs> yeah, it has a it has a grassy note. It has this um the, this Are we deep... drinking? Yes. Do we drink? Yes, we oh, cheered. God. We I cheered. Missed it. Oh, I missed no. it. By we cheered, he means I went, all right. Cheers. <laughs> Went straight <Yes>. into it. <laughs> and that's mm. why I was going dirty 30 to 30. So we have a very dark burn that kind of gets that's you deep in the chest. Super. It kind of cool. hangs around after the fact. I am. I'm a fan, lads. I'm a fan, lads. Mm -hmm. It's pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of those rye flavors up front. It has this tinny tannin. Mm -hmm. kind of metallic note in the middle and then it kind of it, it has this like grassy hay um mm -hmm. nutty aftertaste and it goes down hard it kind of like makes your throat kind of close up a little bit it kind of feels like it's hard to swallow and then your chest has like a little oomph to it at the end that might just be you Almost. i love yeah. <laughs> I love. I don't that. understand how so this could be tropical. That you're on the wrong page. God damn it! Um. <laughs> <laughs> Nat I did, did the, the same, same thing, thing literally five minutes I ago. <laughs> I know. That did the exact same thing. Oh my god! Okay. So the so let's the let's look at this a little goes bit. Goes with this man. Oh, this is from the Copper Fox Distillery. Who I I don't think I've had one of their products before. So oh, they love Scotch whiskey. They fell in love with Scotch oh, whiskey. Oh, I wonder where they got yeah. that inspiration. What they use with it? They love. Oh, he knew whiskey would taste great if the barley was flavored with fruit wood smoke instead of. Ooh. Mm. What? Yeah, it's the only distillery on the planet to mature their whiskey. With toasted applewood. <laughs> this process further develops and enhances the flavor of smoky malt, resulting in a complex and singular flavor experience. They're all non chill filtered. Yeah, very distinct. Very distinct flavors in this one. This one's really interesting, guys. Like, I'm usually not for this kind of flavor palette. But this has me peaked. Yeah, it's um Oh wow. It's this very unique set of experiences that kind of happen as you go on a date with this whiskey, right? So you start off and you're kind of you're like, hey, you want to go to the state fair? And initially She's like, yeah, but we're not going through the main entrance because you skip all the sweet parts of the fair. Right? Okay. And then once you're there... The story, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once you're there, it, it's it's a rough, rough, bumpy start. Right? <laughs> you guys like, are just figuring yourself out, yeah. you know? And you go through this, like, bouncing off of each other, metallic tannin phase in the middle. Right? It has these notes where you're like, I see what you got going on, but we aren't there yet. And then it kind of fades into this wonderful experience where at the end of the night, you take her home and you're like, yeah, we did that. that was fun. <laughs> yeah, we did that. And then you'll kind of like have your your awkward first kiss and then you call it a day and you're like, ah, maybe next time. <laughs> Wait. You had the awkward first kiss, and then you said maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because That's not good. It, good it, it's man. like you get the good flavor, but then it has oh. like a little bit, little bit of oomph in the chest. Okay, okay. You went on a very different date than I did. <laughs> oh, so you're trying to remember? Was my first kiss with my wife awkward? And I was like, I don't think so. I just remembered. Being like, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. Don't look back. <laughs> <You're walking away. laughs> 
I'm just teasing. Andy, I was kidding. No, of course I look back. back. No, it was like, don't look back too did. soon. <laughs> uh, can't be the first one who looks back. Uh, you got to feel it. You know, Anthony's like, you gotta feel the hurt. Playing chicken in his mind <laughs> with how how quick is too quick to turn away. <laughs> Anthony did not watch anime at this point in time. Well, no, you weren't watching anime back then, right? Dragon Ball Z counts. So, like you were, you were watching too much anime. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I mean like you're not watching like Clannad or something like that. You're not catching the dating yeah. uh, practices of Japanese people. No. Where they're like, oh, you can't do this, or you got to be always be the first person to show up, or something like that. No, yeah, that's that's different. That's di- Did you do some of that Japanese stuff? No, no. Okay. My my first date with my wife was probably as unorthodox as it possibly could. Hell have yeah, been, <laughs> for sure, for sure. But um, my in, my imp- impression from this whiskey is. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy every single freaking turn on this. There are a like, lot of turns. There's a lot of turns, but it's never like you're not getting like slung at it. Like to borrow your carnival <laughs> um theme. Yeah. You're never gonna feel as if you're coming out of the seat on this one. The uh the the brackets that come over your shoulders are firmly seated in. You're not gonna get like absolutely destroyed. Don't worry about your neck. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy this ride. It's really nice. Yeah, I yeah, it's a nice it's a nice ride. It has a lot of unique things to it that are atypical of rice, I feel. Like that very peppery like, like you can tell that there are flavors in this whiskey imparted by the process mm-hmm. that they that they did. Like smoking it in applewood very intentional you really get some of those like acidic apple notes that kind of happen along with this pepper and spice and it has this kind of fall flavor going on with it 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 has this boiled peanuts umami flavor for me that is kind of oily but a, a little bit salty and umami and those all come together really nicely. Dude, guys, I'm looking at their line. Bro, I want more. <laughs> you want more? Man. Wait, let's see. What do, what do they have? Eric, they have like a freaking smorgasbord. Go ahead, Andy. Oh, Eric just gave me the idea because you were talking about it being like kind of fally and it's basically about, well, it's kind of fall here where I am. Um, it'd be really cool if someday we had like our own version of flaviar but it was something people could buy quarterly and it would be like you know you've got a quarter of the you you have each season of the year that we are going to be going through and they're Mm. like tailored towards that time of year and then the audience could like drink it with us you let me know when you You get that money you know it, it, it really isn't for sure that hard i bet we could get a resale, a distributor license, mm. pretty much easier than a distilling license, and we mm. could actually build a tap haven box that we that kickstart so cool. or do something. I don't think we'd be able to Make do it, it on like the Flaviar level without making it a full time thing, yeah, because that's hard. But as like mm. a drop or a Kickstarter, yeah, like a limited run like thing, that. yeah. A limited For run sure. thing that we do once or twice a year type mm-hmm. of deal. And what we we would essentially It'd be do, like twelve drinks to give us like Yeah. One week off. Boom. Yeah. yeah. And we would tailor the experiences to it and have we would do a what I would feel is probably a much better job of catering experiences within subsets oh, of yeah. them. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that Flaviar is mostly doing things that are uh, convenient or that people are paying them to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not cultivating yeah. it. They're, they're it's like a the advertisement. Flays. I mean, we found some good stuff. The only stuff. hard part would be making this drop affordable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you get 12 bottles. Not 
not tastings. <laughs> you get twelve <laughs> bottles with this. Twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that. It, Good luck, kids. Some of those might be absolutely insane, but man, that'd be a really cool thing to do. Simply because it, it luckily it really wouldn't require the same level of license mm -hmm. that some would cost. And so a yearly distributor's license type of thing might cost us. We might have to get enough overhead for like 10 grand or something. Like mm -hmm. Okay. For, for a state license for one of us so that we can run the business out of one state, distribute it. And then we don't Go from have there. to get it. I'm closest to year. Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You no. selfish bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it works, right? The the closer your state is to Kentucky, the more respected your whiskey is. It's exactly <laughs> what it's like. It's exactly yeah. what it's like. There is a reason that most of the largest whiskey collections in the world are in Ohio. Guys, because it's the I just sniffed this and got splashed in the eye. Uh weird. Like the you tiniest little splash. Like, a did, splash, gra did gravity mean? just go the opposite direction for a second there? Because I barely moved it. The just a little. I gotta clip that. Just a little bit. What did I do? It's fine. That was weird. The but, but yeah. Anyway. So so, Anthony, how do you how do you feel? About uh, if how it's feel? if we're talking ratings, uh, I really have to have Nat go first this time. Okay, <laughs> Nat, Nat. How do Let's you go. feel about this whiskey? <sighs> I like this a lot. I can tell. I can tell. This I, now, I like no, 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 no. Are we talking like new riff level? Malted I'm rum? Like this is this is very interesting. Like I I love the I like the fact that every single time I go back to this uh Glen Karen, it's it's a deeper smell. It's changed slightly, but the flavor is more or less the same. But like every like the smell allows me to delve into different parts of the taste more, because you know like you taste more you taste with your nose as well as your tongue, and so the olfactory being changed along with my taste buds experiencing the same thing adds more nuance to whatever I'm tasting. I am a big proponent for this kind of experience where like the deeper you get the more varied your experience gets and it's always positive nice i have yet to run into a, a negative experience with this i will say the more in i go back to this whiskey the more i pick it up and go it is kind of focusing in into mm -hmm. w one particular flavor for me oh yeah what do you think i am you're getting Cinnamon coated or dusted boiled peanuts. Man, you and those peanuts, man. You really like peanuts. Do you like peanuts? I like boiled peanuts. Actually. See, it sounds to me like you have a propensity for peanuts of the well, boiled variety. So I, I really am just getting this, like the, that nutty flavor that mm -hmm. I would get when you would boil peanuts, it kind of turns into this meaty texture and flavor, and it gets like this umami oiliness to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting that with a like a sweet coating now. The more I drink mm -hmm. this, I'm getting less spicy as it, I drink it, oh, and more okay. sweet. But it's it's like at first there were like salty, peppered, boiled peanuts. Mm -hmm. And the more I drink it, the more that outer layer is turning into something sweeter, like a cinnamon or a sugar. Mm, okay. See, for me, the deeper I go into this, the more I appreciate the spice because I can I can see how this could be a boring experience if there wasn't some kind of catch at the end for it to kind of like linger on, uh, at least for me. And then for the flavor palettes, then the boiled peanuts vibe that you keep speaking of is there. I'm not going to say that it's not, but I feel like there are other flavors that I feel um, become more and more effusive to me the more I drink it. 
So what I will say is that this is definitely something I would drink every day. A daily drinker certification. I, this, is, this, is, this is definitely a daily drinker certification. It's really good. I'm a big fan. Um, it's gotten me looking at anytime that I look at their website and try to see if they sell anything else. I'm like, okay, I like this. <laughs> Dude, with that said, I cannot wait until we have merch. Oh, man. Because I want a daily drinker certification daily set. drinker are you a daily drinker because uh, i feel like that that'll just be so good like an ice stamp or mm-hmm. a stamp that is daily drinker click, click. for sure for sure oh okay. man so that rating puts it, wise rating yeah yeah um it's a fuck oh you've adopted <laughs> my style Ratings. No, yes, write not. that down. Shut up. Oh, God fuck. dang it! No, no, no. <laughs> Equivalent. I'm thinking to Anthony's. No, Anthony. <laughs> stupid. Anyway, no, it's the um, way. It's not it's the, way. the way. I can't. I can't believe that this is the way. Anyway, um, I will give this a six. It's a solid okay. six. It's a solid, solid six. It is not better than Frey Ranch for me. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will still drink a Frey Ranch over this. But that being said, this is really good. I think I put Frey Ranch at seven. Did I put Frey Ranch at seven? I was, I, I Fre- was, I was about to. I think mine's like that. an eight. Yeah, you, you said the Frey Ranch is a seven or higher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is like a six, comfortably in a six territory for sure. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Oh. <sighs> I feel okay, good about I mean, my rating. Thank well, God. actually, Nat, Nat, how much would you pay for this whiskey? Because this is... Uh, man. Good thing I didn't click on the website. Uh, I would pay... Let me uh, man, Let me take a freaking fly on the wild side. I would pay like 50 bucks for this. Okay. Yeah, I think that's close to what they're actually going <laughs> to market this for. Anthony. Well... What is your rating? I gotta lie, I'm really impressed. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's magic, you know. Oh. Oh. Meh. oh. That's my rating right there. Meh. That was it. shut up! God damn it! <laughs> oh, you make me so mad. <laughs> 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 Fuck. <laughs> Just say what you want. <laughs> I gotta lie, I'm really impressed. Uh, you gotta lie, I'm really. <laughs> you didn't catch it the first time. <laughs> I don't like oh it. man! So, I don't like it. The th- overall, the thing with me is it's too peppery. So, it's too it's too peppery. peppery. I actually got a, a new pepper grinder the other day, and I and I know firsthand what it's like to over pepper your stuff. I've been doing it a bit. And it's not great. Um, and so, like, the initial smell was interesting, but very peppery. That wasn't bad. Like, I didn't dislike that initial smell. I was like, it was it was strong, and it was cool. Uh, but afterwards, the smell became very sweet, which was also good. I like the sweet smell. And then there's also a really good aftertaste. Like, a really, like, nutty caramel aftertaste. Um, but... It's just like so much pepper. It, it's just so strong. It's just it tastes over seasoned to me. It's just like it's just so pungent. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And so like if I just I still taste it a little bit. So like there's there's definitely good in there. I can see the good. It's just it's like I'm sensitive to the pepper or something like that. So I give it a four out of ten. I like it, but I wouldn't like. Okay go out of my way to have it but that is higher than my old standard with you know three out of ten is like my like daily type of thing like this is good though because like now i'm like okay we now know that there is a difference between what nat likes and what anthony likes yeah it's weird and it's the line of pepper interestingly enough because you love stuff that like hits the thing is i don't and i don't dislike the pepper it's just too much pepper like 
if if the pepper would go away faster i think i'd be okay with it but it's just like so peppery so for the whole amount even while now, the aftertaste is happening there's still the pepper there um, so and what would you pay for it i'd pay like 30 bucks okay yeah well, yeah but yeah four I... out of ten Mm. Mine's gonna be pretty, pretty, pretty comparable. Eric, come on, come on. Really? But for different reasons. For different <gasps> reasons, actually. I'm alone at the top. This is why I made you go first. So, so <laughs> I do, I do think this is just a solid, great whiskey. Um, I think it's right below my daily drink. This is very equivalent to like the one we had last week, where it's just right below my daily drinker um and there are things i really really like about it i love this nutty peppery like sweetness that we're getting that is kind of fun i love this festival flavor i think the part that i don't like the part that kicks it out of the running for a daily drinker to me is actually that metallic tannin middle part I like the beginning. I like the end. There's this middle section that crosses over into this like tinny, tannin, metallic kind of tinge that isn't my favorite flavor. And I think the more that I drink drink this, like if I were to keep drinking and keep it drinking, the thing that would make it to where I'm like, ah, I don't want to have that today would be that metallic middle flavor. That would be the thing keeping it from the daily drinker. To me. But it is an entirely good whiskey to have on occasion for me that I think is definitely has the qualities of a daily drinker if you can get past that middle flavor. But that's that's the part that really gets it for me. But listeners, if you have a different opinion, you've had this whiskey, let us know in the comment section. <laughs> that over there <laughs> trying to... <laughs> not trying to start a war. He's like, if you think this whiskey is good you like me, me here, you little join fucker. me in the comment section and tell me. How tell much me that you stand with me, brothers. <laughs> stand with me, brothers. Stand with me now. The beacons are lit. God do off for a rise, anyway. Oh man. <laughs> uh, okay. And then for for price, this bottle sits right in between y'all at right around forty dollars. So honestly, pretty okay. reasonably priced. Not bad at all for forty bucks. I think essentially for me, my price wants line up pretty one to one with my rating times ten. Right. So if I rate you around a four and you're selling it around a forty dollar whiskey. You're in a solid spot for me. If you're a seven and you're right around 70 bucks, you're in a very solid spot. You know, um, I think there are, of course, some outliers and craziness that happens once you get to like the crazy good, like outrageously rare whiskeys and stuff like that, where there are some like exceptions. But generally, that's good. So I think at $40, this is a perfectly drinkable whiskey that you should definitely go and try uh i think the copper fox distillery is doing some cool stuff they're a uh, virginia distillery it looks like which is pretty West cool virginia so they're honestly mow, not that mow, far mow. from uh north carolina so could be a cool one to get in contact with i i do think they would I, I, like some of their other whiskeys sound really cool they have a rye that they finish in cognac barrels, for example. Dude, I saw uh, that and I was like, I don't even, I don't even know if I like cognac like that. I want to try it. A, a, a rye <laughs> finished in port barrels. Uh, they have some too. finishing options. This one is just their base rye whiskey. Uh, the one thing that I don't see yet that I would love to see more of is some higher age whiskeys. Um, it looks like I don't see any with an age statement yet. So I, I would love to see some older whiskeys in their lineup. But 
I imagine they are a relatively new distillery, which means they might not have the age under their belt yet. So we got might the have to wait a few thing years. going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is fine. You got to start somewhere. You got to do a you got to do a big willy style, as they say, or so, something like that. You know, yeah, it'll be fine. So, yeah, a, a pretty good whiskey, I think. You know, if Flaviar gives me anything above a four, I'm always really happy. Bro, it's it is rare. It is rarefied air for any whiskey to come out of that box and i'm like that's not terrible oh this isn't yeah. bad yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and flaviar this isn't a mark against you yeah they're the, they're they're giving a lot of unique whiskeys in there for, sure. for I, sure and i think that's something that we we haven't talked about a great deal on the podcast is that we haven't particularly rated a lot of the Flaviar whiskeys very high. And that isn't a mark against Flaviar. No. They have done a great job of providing extremely unique whiskeys with very, very different flavor profiles in one bundle, which is one of the reasons we're doing it as part of the podcast, because that's mm -hmm. really cool. And we get to try out a bunch of different unique whiskeys. So, Flaviar, when you're looking at your bottom line and you see that you've made a little bit of extra profit at the end of the year, remember us. Remember, you know? And send Just us like your remember. next box for free and we'll review it on here. For Please. Free. Let's go. Please. Preferably with one of each <laughs> tasting. Yes. One of each tasting. That would be nice. That would be one. Duplicates. Not, not maybe so not. Much. Not so much. Maybe not. Maybe not. So it must be like handmade. <laughs> I have to assume that there's some yeah. kind of human error that could be possibly oh, put into this. 100. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Congrats. There's no way they're doing doing those automatic. I, no. I can't imagine they have enough clientele to have a factory for that yet. I don't think that there's a machine that could like do that. I mean, like I'm sure there is. But like the amount of customization that would have to go into that to make sure when it's going into the foam insert and it's going at the right place at the right pressure and everything. I think that that's what 24 uh, autonomous arms probably placing it in that at the same time or a conveyor yeah. that's working on multiple axes moving it for one arm. That's just no. Yeah, that would, that'd be a lot. I imagine there's. There is a team of people that are doing it manually. You, uh, it has to be. you just need to talk to my wife because that's what she used to do. Yeah. Shit. She used to... Ash, sound off in the chat. How how feasible is what we just talked about? Uh, like, what kind of like cost are we talking if we want to go ahead and get an assembly line of machines putting together Flaviar boxes? No. Oh, gentlemen. But while she's running the numbers. Good whiskey. Mm -hmm. Who here has played anything <laughs> outside of our regular game that we're probably going to talk about? Guys, I haven't been able to play anything. 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 It feels really bad. Oof. Like, I wish I was able to say that, like, I had time to play other games because I wanted to play Raven Watch for, like, the longest time. I was like, dude, this is going to be the shit. Agreed. And then. Agreed. The freaking weekend happened. Uh, I was supposed to go see Childish Gambino yesterday, and that was going to take up all my Sunday time. But instead of my what? Sunday time being taken up, I spent it working oh. and also not going to see Childish Gambino because he's not he's not feeling well. So oh. if you're watching this Childish Gambino, which, you know, of course you are. Um, yeah. Just know, you know, I'm looking out for you, man. I, I want to make sure that you're feeling good. I hope that everything works out because honestly, I would feel really bad if after all of this waiting and after all of this plans, he's like, he gets sick because he comes to Houston, oh. you know? Yeah. That's so I spent all of Sunday doing absolutely nothing but working. And then I ate some food that my wife cooked 
And that's it. I did nothing else. Oh. It was unfortunate. So I didn't do anything. I didn't play anything. I spent a lot of time doing absolutely fuck all. I think I'm in a similar boat. I mean, I've played WoW, but like only in the sense that I've done world quests and like gathering here and there. I haven't Mm -hmm. like I I don't remember when, but at some point I finished not the campaign, but the pre 80 campaign. Okay. And I've unlocked the that. level 80 stuff, but I haven't even started the level 80 stuff. Mm, so I'm looking go. forward to doing okay. it. But Nat, have you finished the campaign? No. Okay, so I, I can't talk because I, I, ju- I finished the campaign. So and I, 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 do, I was interested in talking about the story as a whole. But... So I've watched a few videos and I don't feel like I'm going to be missing out on anything. I think I have a general gist of what's going to happen, like, or what's what was intended to happen with um, Zalateth. I have no idea. Zalateth. I I will say, uh, without without spoiling anything, that I am interested to see where they go, but I do feel like, in my opinion, one thing that the campaign falls short on is that it actually felt too complete. Like, How so? Like I got to the end of the campaign and I was like, wait, but what are you going to do? <laughs> but like, like, what do you like, mean though? Like the, the campaign feels like the story that they have built up for the quest that we've all done, a lot of it has really just been resolved to, the, to some degree. Oh, I see what you mean. Respecting hey, others. Respect for our time. Yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. with you there. I'm with you there. And I like it to that degree, but it does, it did leave me in a limbo state of being like, okay, but where's the story going to go? Like, what's going to happen next in season one? What's going to happen? Next in this. You like it feels wait. Exactly, exactly. I am sure they're gonna do stuff. I understand. I, I really hope that you're not just saying that is. like you wish there was a, ter- a, a a cliffhanger. I wish that I had a from a story perspective, I wish I had something to look forward See, to. I fundamentally mm. disagree with that. Especially because we've been rewatching an old show called Smallville, where oh, dude. they are horrible with like, oh, who's dead at the end of the season? Like everybody's dead, you know, or something like that. Nobody's ever, of course, dead but in they do insane yeah. cliffhangers, which is so disrespectful to the audience. And it is well, much better writing to have little things that maybe people picked up on that haven't been resolved but don't necessarily need to be resolved for you to be like, oh, chapter complete. Like, And here's the thing. I agree with that. I don't want a cliffhanger like a Smallville cliffhanger. That's not what I want. I honestly think the story could have stayed exactly the same, and they could have added one additional scene that essentially said, like, Ah, I'm still here <laughs> and shit will go down but at it, some point. Like it didn't Eric, even have to be a cliffhanger from like a, a, a like w- like crazy stuff. Like we know what's happening. I they just kind of like end it and then like move on, everything resolved, and you feel kind of weird. And then like the little follow-up stuff you do to the campaign really just does this this. Not even leave you in limbo state yeah. of like every character then kind of talks about it like the entire story's over like it really doesn't feel like a chapter ended it felt like <laughs> ah the story's complete and every character's like my time my story is complete and this character does it too and so afterwards I, my story is complete too yeah. uh, meet yeah. mine too yeah and <laughs> So I didn't want a cliffhanger. I just wanted to, like, it didn't. We know that chapter one is complete. Yes. They didn't need to 
do the extra like 15 miles of being like everything's complete, which is what it feels like at the end. Not inherently bad. Nothing's bad about that. It just, it has a weird feeling that I imagine they're going to fix in like season one or season two. But I have, a, yeah. I was going to say, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of stuff that they're going to be dropping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I I'm, not, feeling, I'm not worried about it. I have a feeling. It's just a weird feeling. I'm going to go and watch it, or I'm going to go and play it. And then I'm going to come back next week and be like, oh my God, okay, this is one of the classic cases where Eric was going so fast, he missed this. Bro, this is what's happening next. <laughs> Because you've done that so Dude, many I, times. I, nah, but not in this case. I've already, I like, I've watched all the videos. I've read all this stuff multiple times. I've already done all my lore, like four hour lore dives. I've been putting on lore videos on the he's side. He's put in work, Anthony. Like, he's know, done what he's know, supposed to do. I know about the, the, like, all the little details now, like, all the stuff that wasn't even in the main quest that were in side quests that I didn't even do. Like Lore's <laughs> Lore Lore and WoW is my jam. And is it though? So at some point I'm gonna learn all of it. Uh but are you? I mean I mean not. I would. It's it I, honestly, there's a lot of stuff in this game that I'm like, I don't need to know all of this. <laughs> now I would say if what's her name, um uh, I wish what's her name was still an author, Christina Golden. God. Why? Uh, she was my favorite author. Yeah, but she I read sucks all of the audio wow books. books. She does. Oh, you, it is. She what has. Is, she the way she speaks when she's reading the book. Yeah, is so I don't, dull. Wait, did I she like do the audio book for World of Warcraft, or did she do an audio book? She like wrote a book series? and like, did the, the audio book for hers. Yeah. Oh, and the way no. she reads is so. so low like we used yeah. to listen to them while like falling asleep and usually you can make it to about 15 minutes which is about how long it takes someone to fall asleep with her usually. you fall asleep in 60 seconds like <laughs> yeah thank you helping me fall asleep but also like i have no idea what happened you can't make it yeah. through the book oh my gosh but i do love i i read all her books manually when she was still a big oh my god workout i like she obviously hasn't um her her last one i think was in like 2022 and then she since left the writing team so she's not working i think at blizzard anymore but um awkward back when she was still writing i had read almost all of her world of warcraft books I like uh, Ash's new theory. Uh, they're pretending that everything is great, and then everyone dies in the next chapter, and Azeroth explodes. We go back in time to save it. So classic WoW is the next expansion. No. Oh my gosh! Please, we no. start over. No. <laughs> I I there are two I things mean, that I hope Warcraft for. Two. We know that's coming eventually. But go ahead, Eric. I I was gonna say, they have introduced. Uh, this idea and it's been multiple times but i love that they're doing more about it and i want us to have a raid mechanic that delves into this more the darkness mechanic for the kobolds uh, phenomenal the best thing in this expansion by far in my opinion i mm. love this idea i, I want to see raids not even the stealth aspect of it but the fact that it feels like a an additional resource that everybody has and has to manage and that's going to be so interesting a mechanic inside of a raid of fighting a dark being like you do in the cobalt mines and having to have people manage the candle and not let the candle go out that's cool i want more of that and that lore cool has been yeah. embedded Ooh. inside of WoW for so long. We've been hearing, don't let them don't take touch my the candle. candle. Don't touch you my know, candle. For so yeah. long. And now yeah. we have some background to it. And we have these cool little tidbits of the, you know, the Cobalt King and these politics there. That And the, the, the fact that that darkness, we didn't kill it in that delve, right? I no, want to see. Still around. Yeah. yeah. I want to see raids around that and raids where that becomes a thing where, you know, um, uh, what's her, Zalatoth and all that goes in and starts using the darkness and stuff like that. I want to, I want to see great mechanics behind that. That's, that's such a cool idea. I, 
because I haven't finished the campaign, I haven't seen. I don't think I've done that delve in particular. You so you should have. You should have. That's Did before I have the not. spider. You're not required to do delves. Delves are optional. Yeah, you're not required. Yeah, that quest. The option. I haven't gotten to the optional grind yet. That's. I'm a... just trying to finish the the. Uh... Oh no! There That's is a quest a, that there is a do quest inside of the cobalt. cobalt stuff. I've done yeah. it, but I. Oh wait, yeah, I've, I have. I done have this that problem one. where if I'm doing storyline quests, I can mostly keep up with what's going on. But once I go into a dungeon, but I killed the king, right? What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. right after you deal with that, the darkness chases you out. Oh. And you do this like little mini game where you have to keep the candle lit. I the did candle. not. That wait. didn't happen to me. It was poison. It didn't happen to me either, and it wasn't. So I, I think Eric. I think there is a different story yeah. for each modifier on the delves. Maybe. So I've been playing real life World of Warcraft because which is uh, my wife wanted this, which is a ah. like stone, summoning oh, stone, nice. heart stone, stone here. Uh, this uh -huh. one, Hearts you oh, can't see the blue yeah. thanks to my background, but it glows. It actually looks kind of like that. Oh. But it glows in the dark and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's it's like a rocky texture. It feels like a rock. It's actually kind of hefty. This was not hard to do. Um, but then after we did this, my wife uh, requested a keycap. Oh, a keycap. Which is much smaller. Oh, dude. And uh, didn't dude. realize that, you know, when you shrink things down, it gets way more complicated. Um, so after like 50 tries and errors, made this. <laughs> incredible oh wow nice. did you get it to actually fit the um keys oh yeah wow. i just pulled this off my keyboard to show you guys so i got wow. two of them one for me and one for my wife so now i got one of those you fitting. have the patience of a saint <laughs> anthony because <laughs> i've i've seen what it takes to get into like doing keycaps yeah so it, w it was really it was a oh, it was dude. a problem solving it was almost like solving a puzzle right because you go to print it and then things start to fail and it's like okay why did that fail okay adjust this does it still fail that way no but now it fails in this way okay adjust that yeah. <laughs> like and just constant yeah. trial constant and error constant going i don't know what i'm oh, doing oh and now, i, will say I Anthony, shrunk yeah. this to use as a like a I can't remember what you call it, but I was flushing into it. So there's a tiny baby little one that oh. it's on. It's on cooldown. That's why it's not as blue. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's I how see. that works, obviously. So that's gonna say, on there. I was I was going to say, have you oh. done one of the comprehensive stress uh, like extreme tests? No. Yeah. For your printer? No. I would say it's worthwhile to do mm -hmm. because it'll give for you the thresholds of each of those values because some of them are actually designed to show you like well whoa, so the how tricky much bit skipping you need or how much it'll pull back to cool the um the filament overhang the difference like it yeah. tests a lot more than you think it would yeah. and then you can write all those down well so two things one here's a hearthstone squishy uh stress ball that you can buy from world of warcraft for comparison uh, no. I refuse. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the thing about my printer is if you go and buy a bamboo printer nowadays and you only ever use bamboo uh, stuff, like they have settings for other manufacturers uh, of plastic, a uh, filament, that's what it's called. Um, and so you can't have really good luck with that. But and we've had no problems with the the blue that you see here is a glow from overture uh and it's just a it's a basic pla but it's a glow and with the overture basic setting in bamboo no problems with that one uh this is a rock pla it has a little rock it, yes it has it has rock particles literally in particles it. in it when you feel it it feels like a like a smooth like rained on rock like this feels like a real rock in my hand right now it's really cool, but <laughs> that causes some serious differences that uh -huh. have to be adjusted for. And yeah, Eric, you're right. If I would have done a certain test, I probably could have found the right values without just trial and error. But I went the trial and yeah. error method because 
I was trying to be faster. Because you are a sociopath. <laughs> well, it's, sometimes it's just faster. For, just for Matt. So this right here. Oh, yeah. Bruh. Is uh, kind of similar. Except. And it's the hardest thing I've ever tried to print on. It's the same concept. But with wood. Yeah, those look so cool. So it's, it's wood pill pill filament. Wood filament. I printed a, uh, a thing in it. That's a dark and one. there's little wood particles in it and you can buy like oak or whatever article board does it actually smell like the wood yeah That's shut so up cool, dude. Yeah. it feels like wood it has like a wooden feeling to it and so i printed off uh i have a game called ruins of arnok it's one of my uh favorite board games um <laughs> And I printed off the uh, the board game insert in the wood filament because it's all ruins and exploration based. And one of the things I found like had all of these cool inserts yeah. for it. But the one problem you run into with this one, the wood can actually burn while it's going through the filament or yeah. the the the, the so nose. Has, so it has to be at a low temperature, which causes all sorts of. Well, and uh, then it gets stuck more and the wood, yeah. no matter what you do, the wood particles start to like stay in the nozzle just a uh, little bit. Dude, and so every so now and then I have to like run a different type of filament in there that's super sticky that get gets all the gunk all out. The wow. out. Yeah. Wait, so like, is there a nozzle that is effectively like made for that well yeah so like material? the people that sell this one overture on their website they say if you have any clogging issues with this we highly recommend using a 0.6 nozzle hardened steel specifically yeah. and so eric for it, wood it, it would probably so be different it all, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's going to be different for everything but there are a few concepts that are just generally applicable but right the larger the diameter of the hole in the nozzle the the less it matters if particles stay in the nozzle and the longer mm. time you have before you, you end up clogging yeah. additionally the material of the nozzle affects the coefficient of friction and the heating and how much it'll bond with particles inside of the filament that'll gotcha. determine how many particles stay in the nozzle when it's going through and essentially though even with normal plastic anything that has a, a, a like any particles that do not have a melting point that the nozzle gets to will slowly build up in the nozzle over time mm. and sooner or later will cause a clog no matter what you do that's why Parts they recommend will break. you run yeah Some so break. you always have to run break. cleaning filament yeah. you always have to do up now i do have to like give huge credit to bamboo like this is just the first time that i've had something worth talking about i've had pr i've printed so many things very successfully very minor like maybe blemish or something like that and that's because most of the stuff i print ends up having really good instructions i'm using my mm -hmm. bamboo filament or it comes on maker world which is like bamboo's site where people publish things and they've tuned it for a bamboo printer and so when people it's made specifically and yeah, it, when they yeah. they've already done the trial and error they've made sure this is going to work so you have a really high yeah. chance of things working this one uh, worked really well because there was, I can't remember where it was from, but it, it, it might've been from maker world. Now, the reason that the keycap was so hard was it was only geometric data. There were no instructions. There were no comments. No one has been like, I successfully Nobody's printed this. told you, Hey, set it for this. Go yeah. ahead and make sure that you're putting it at this nozzle temperature, yeah. this speed, at this detail to make sure that you're and, not running into any issues. Yeah. yeah, and you have to remember the minute you scale something down and the nozzle is you're smaller, running into such shit. Well, you have all those other issues that I talked about are amplified, and especially oh, yeah. if you're doing it with like a rock filament or a wood filament, the Even smaller worse. that nozzle is, the less time you have in general. Like with that wood filament, with this the the, the printer that I have, with the heat it gets up to, with all the things going. There is no way for me to prevent 
clogging. Yeah. It will clog at some point. Dude, and there's like, and, there is something magical about this filament because there is not like the layer lines that you're used to. This face is smooth without me doing anything. It like that's cool. perfectly melted together. That's cool. And that also, yeah, that depends on the filament type and of course the bamboo nozzle. Are you running a point two? I'm running a point four. That's like the most popular thing nowadays is everyone's doing point yeah, four. four. I did. Yeah, that's what I do too. Initially try to do point two for the keycap because like, well, it's a keycap. It's small. I want to get as much detail as possible. That was terrible yeah. for this rock filament absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible i was about to say once you get to a certain size like the wood filament for example can't. i can't even print it at point two i print it i actually try to um i have a point six nozzle that i'll use i started using for the wood filament because i was just tired of having to print one piece at a time because i figured out that no matter what i do at about four, the 14 hour mark it's uh over. it's it's gonna clog and there's nothing I can do about wow. it. Then I'm going to have to restart the print. So I was like, I all my prints have to be under 14 hours. And doing it at point 0.4 would allow me to print one of each piece in eight hours. So that meant doing two of them was 16 Jesus. hours, which was over the thing. So almost always my print would fail like right before it got done. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. Mm. Moving to a point 0.6 nozzle allowed me to do two pieces before it incredible <laughs> hey, but that doubles your production time you know right? we'll take it we'll take it but yeah just for for there's a lot of people i'm sure out there like me who have wanted to do 3d printing for a long time but you're just like i've heard a lot of stories where do i start it's a lot of work i don't think i should get into this get a bamboo and it's no work at all yeah. get a bamboo stick yeah, with the, the bamboo filament <laughs> It's Guys, like using a normal 2D printer on paper. That I easy. need you to realize how absurdly nice one that bamboo printers are, but also the price Bro, tag no, is a bit that's inclusive. Not true. That's not true. The Dude, price tag a is a bit A normal printer is like $200. Correct. So you can print in 3D instead of on paper for 2.5 times that price. 500 bucks. Here, here is my argument, times. Matt. Here, yeah. That's the same price as the PS5. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. Wait, because uh-huh. I'm about to blow it out of the water. Uh-huh. It's not that They expensive. just released the A1. Oh, yeah. Look at the A1 Mini. Which is. You are talking. Is. You can get a bamboo printer that's really nice. It is. For three four. Three fucking 40. That's less than an Xbox. There, that is less than a PS5. There are printers in 2D that are more expensive than that. Insane. Now, never been a better obviously, time. Obviously, and here's the thing: Anthony was talking about the Mini. The Mini has far less practical use cases, in my opinion. So I probably wouldn't recommend Dude, it. Dude, I have seen people. someone print with an A1 Mini with it mounted upside down, like at a 45 degree angle and it yeah. prints. It's crazy. Like it's, crazy. it's printing like this way. Like not that printer, 200 bucks. No. Yeah. 200 bucks for that printer. No. Yeah. I can't believe you. Uh, look over dude i've printed A1 so many mini. useful right, things like not just fun things let me go ahead and look at this like if y'all could see i've now, got like phone mount. your print plate is so small at that point uh not saying you can't use that but you, ha- you would be you surprised though come up with you some be, creative no, no, you cases. would be so surprised when i go and look at a, a maker world thing for a bamboo printer there's almost always an a1 mini option for it oh yeah yeah yeah. and yeah. also they very often are initially a1 mini they're not initially I, the big well, ones and here's the thing if you do it on a mini it's like you are not limited in size by the mini you're limited by time because you can always build pieces in pieces right so mm-hmm. it doesn't like hinder you in your ability to do something it just hinders you in your time to do something. For somebody who could print it all on one base plate, you may have to do four separate Dude, prints on the A1. This is crazy. The A1 Mini does multicolor yeah. with the AMS Bro. Lite. Yeah. 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 That's nuts. 
I'm not so surprised with the multicolor features because I feel like that's become more commonplace with the more premium models. What I'm looking for at this point is like, what is going to actually pull me from? Because I have two 3D printers. One of them was given to me. It's an Ender Three. Are you serious? And yeah, like I I got it for free pretty much because I uh, as the tech of a school, I was told, hey. Um, I have this. I never use it. Would you like to have it? And I was like, sure, why not? Um, it's an Ender 3. It's not the magnetic base where you can kind of like easily replace it or anything. And then I also have a resin base printer. But I don't have any use case for them. I uh, So I have this problem too. And I'll talk about it a little bit. Okay. I have so many use okay. cases. <laughs> This, then you can uh, have and them, here's, Anthony. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Anthony, I think, has become you know, a farmer. Oh, <laughs> and there's a lot of use of cases that, for farming. I haven't used yes. it for farming yet. But but my corollary there is, as your level of I need to do handiwork increases, and the level at which your organization of said handiwork tools increases then it is more and more worthwhile to print things to help you. The best thing that you can do on a printer, in my opinion, is organization. Because organization can oftentimes save you time, and ultimately, that's what everybody wants, right? Like, if you're printing something, and it saves you time in the future, you're gonna the do printer it again. is paying for, your, paying for itself in mm-hmm. dividends. And with, every time you save that time, you are so it is so apparent so for example for me the biggest use case for 3d printers board games why because i do organizers and inserts into my board games you know what every time i want to play dark tower what before the organizer would have taken me 40 minutes to set up i can set up in five minutes tops right yep it checks up it saves me so much time now, every single board game that takes a long time to set up, if there's an insert that'll save me a bunch of time, guess what? I'm immediately turning on my printer again and immediately printing on an insert. I don't care how much upfront work it takes me because my printer isn't nearly as good as the bamboo printer, right? Like it, it sometimes it takes me a lot of time to get that insert, but I know at the end of the day, that's going to save me a ton of time down the road, right? Now, what if you have toolboxes, drawers, all of these things. Like for example, I have like my drawer of like art supplies and all that kind of stuff that I organize inside of this thing right here. So I have these little organizers for them, right? I bought these before I had a 3D printer. So I have a ton of them, Mm -hmm. all of my drawers are organized. If I didn't pay a bunch of money buying hundreds of organizers, I would have used something like Gridfinity so, or something like that yeah, to something organize to all it. my so stuff. So here's a few examples, sure. and and maybe one of these is an organizational thing in a way, or maybe two. But um, so some of the recent things I've made, I have two things attached to my desk, screwed in from the bottom. One is a MagSafe phone uh, charger uh, holder. The other is for my Apple Watch. So now they can just sit here and be good. Uh, another one is a fruit fly trap, which is pretty cool. One is a uh, request of my wife. It's a doke, duck, duck soap dish. Doke. doke. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, a little doke. ducky that you can put soap in and then it like water gums out of its mouth and like spits water into the sink. Um, ridiculous, but okay. I have a, a, a pop can rack. So soda cans, you put them on the, the thing in the fridge and they, rotate uh-huh. through so that's kind of organizational but like super useful to okay. increase space to the to the kitchen uh, to the fridge um uh-huh. the best thing in my opinion for me at least is last minute gifts because so bad oh it's someone's birthday mm-hmm. okay just made my father-in-law a uh, articulating like uh asian chinese dragon that glows and is inside of a multicolored egg so he opens it up and boom awesome like he likes dragons so that's cool um nerd yeah <laughs> and so it's just like it's, it's cool stuff like that and now when i 
print things that are multicolored, I'm going to be using this cool project called the Purge Waste Table. So instead of pooping out all of the filament when it's switching between them and just throwing it away, it's going to print all that filament into the uh, parts that uh, slot together to create a full table, like an IKEA lack table and stuff like that. So those are just a few, a few examples. Let me, let me, for you, Nat, there uh -huh. are two things where I think it would be immediately applicable. Three okay. things that where it would be immediately applicable for you and your wife. Okay. One, cable management. Music yeah. cables, other cables, yeah. things like that. There are literally tens, if not 100,000 plus 3D printed ideas for cable management of every type of cable you can think of. Music, True. computer, whatever you want, right? I have a pegboard in here where I can 3D print things to go inside that pegboard for specific types of cables. Yeah, yeah. Two, gardening. Ah, shit, yeah. There are so many self-watering vases where you can put water in one side and it'll slowly let water into the other side over the course of a week, right? Just because the plant slowly lets it eat water from the other side. There are different types of plant decorations. There are plant stands. You can do indoor um, indoor uh, herb gardens inside of like things you can 3D print. They have entire systems for gardening, outdoor pots, indoor pots, all that kind of stuff. Three, I could not tell you how many toys. printed tools there are or hair accessories that might make Mel's life infinitely oh, easier. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah for yeah, organization, yeah. for all kinds of stuff that she may be able to use it for. For being able to tell sizes on different things. All kinds of stuff. So, mm. so what you're saying is... Or I've been fidget toys. Fidget. Or fidget toys. Yeah, of course. Yeah. There's always the fun stuff too, but like, I think the the way that I would think about 3D printing for most people, for the general audience, mm -hmm. to be like, are I'm, you thinking I about getting a 3D populace. printer? Right. Yeah. You should look at places where you feel like you waste time the most. Then you should take those places and see if a 3D printer Honestly, though, has something that it can do to save you that. There's money. a thing, in my opinion that happened to me which was so the initial reason we got the 3d printer was to make an attachment for this floor unit ac unit for this tiny ass window because i couldn't use the stuff that came with it huge awesome improved my life a lot well worth it home development is huge but by the way you can home development print. is I, huge yeah so many things it's, for that. I, I think it's just like thinking with portals <laughs> Once you start making stuff with 3D printers, you start being like, oh, I could print something for that. Oh, this thing broke in my car. I could print something for that that will let me use the car for a few days until I get a real part. But see, I 100% agree with that. I just think that's a that isn't always immediately grabbable by somebody who doesn't already own a 3D printer. For me and you, now that we have one, I'm on board with you, right? Like that makes sense. But I think for people who don't have it yet, well, that's what I'm getting at. You need like, to you find something yeah. in your life that you need. To, so for example, reason. you had an initial reason where you were like, I need, I, I'm either going to spend this money to fix yeah. this or I could buy a 3D printer and I could fix this and do whatever else I want to with the 3D printer, right? Oh, people need that here's initial another one. push to get into we, it. So we have an electric car and the house we bought came with an electric car charger, but it doesn't fit our car. So we always have to use an adapter. Now, instead of plugging it in, okay. now we can't just hang it like it's going into the thing at the gas station. You know, it can't just sit there because we have the adapter on. We don't want to take the adapter off every time and then potentially forget to grab it and stuff like that. So we just leave it and we'd hang it. I 3D printed a thing that will let us hang it while it's attached, which is like specific because there's others that people have for, oh, you take the attachment off, you put it there and you put this here. It's like, no, no, no. Keep them together. No. Plug it in there. Done. And that has been just awesome. And it's just like a tiny little life improvement 
but huge super helpful anytime you're doing a home improvement or life improvement type of project and you go into amazon or you go on to google and you're like hey i need something that's like this or you're researching something for the home and you're like i need something that holds this or does that and you find it 95 percent of the time mm-hmm. with a 3d printer you can save yourself 20 upwards of 150 bucks by being able to just 3d print something yeah i could not tell you how expensive some things are for just daily house oh, electrical well, type of work that's absolutely egregious how expensive it is when i can 3d print it for five bucks yeah one of the biggest things is uh mounts like uh, stands for one wheel form of stand or mount yeah like oh i'm just gonna print a one wheel stand Oh, I want to buy a wall mount for my guitar. Actually, I could just print a wall mount for my guitar. Like, not only can you print it, you can. I made shelves with three D printing. Make it however you you want. You could probably also make the screws for it, but I would probably not do that. (laughs) So screws are actually good to do as long as you aren't doing weight bearing uh, screws. But if they're so not not mounting on the wall. Not mounting, not mounting on a wall. On a wall. Yeah, but you yeah. just use a wood screw or a, or a drywall yeah. mount through your 3D printed stuff and it works great. But for example, yeah. I've 3D printed like little things to hang like pictures with that you can do really easily. So as long as they're not load bearing, you can do that, yeah. right? Yeah. So. yeah, but the thing is, I don't know how difficult uh, your printers are to work with. The thing is, I I've, I have a lot of experience with 3D printing with a, um, um, what was it, a Creality? No, really? no, no. what is it? Oh my Ender God. Reality? It was like, Ender Creality? No, 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 no. It was, uh, it was not Prusa. Um, God, it was a big white mofo. Jesus, I forget. Uh, but they bought they bought it for the schools that we were acting mm. as techs for whenever they bought the lab, yeah. and the la- and the printers were pretty hot were pretty high oh, end. I and will so say I you have the Ender in Three, right? I have the Ender Three. Um, the Ender Three is, the base, is still amazing, and it's yeah. So great. to it's be modular. fair, like the bamboo is obviously just fantastic Better. out of the box yeah but you can upgrade parts on the ender 3 to make it almost as good as the bamboo it just takes a lot of work to get there but it can be done like that's one of our one of our friends he still runs off of uh, an ender 3 he's upgraded it and it can outperform most bamboos right see the thing is here's what i'm wanting i'm wanting to do because right now for printing the aesthetic for me is very important and I have seen people print things that are like really cool. Like there was a um, somebody had built a modular um, secondary screen for their Mac Pro, and like like they slotted it in that is cool. the Mac Pro into into the base, and then they put a screen into the uh, the uh, pressable. Yeah. Sorry, into the screen socket, and you could press the screen socket button, and it would pop the screen back out. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, that's really cool. And then the printer was like an all-white piece. It was like super nice, and I was like, what is that? And that's kind of got what got me into printing in the first place, but I just don't see it being like something I get into unless there's like a big ask that I'm looking for for printing, if that makes any sense. I have the materials. I have the note. I have the the knowledge for it i'm not like a complete layman to it but you know when you might need in the time that I, what uh horizontal Cows. racks for uh bottles of alcohol <laughs> oh <laughs> i've seen ones for no. wine but <laughs> if you need to if you need to start a... going up <laughs> i might i might i was we'll about see. to say really if you if you're even slightly interested in getting back into it the way you, I would say to treat it is the next time you think about buying something. Think about if you could print it. Look yeah. up whether you can print it or not. And if you yeah. can't, awesome. Just don't worry about it. Go buy it. The next time can, you go and think, think about buying print. something, yeah. see if you can print it. If you can't, that's fine. Go and buy it, right? Like mm-hmm. make that decision. And what's going to happen is sooner or later, you're going to run into a problem. You're going to be like, oh, I need to buy this thing. 
And then you're, if you ask yourself, can I print this thing? And you're like, yes. And then you're like, uh, but I like the one that I, oh my gosh, I'm buying this for 180 bucks. Yes. I'm going to print this <laughs> instead, right? Like the, you, sooner or later, you're going to run into a problem where that happens, yeah. right? Like for example, board game inserts Dude. can cost upwards of 80 to 160 bucks Fuck me. for a good one. <laughs> I can print one for $2 of material. Like Absolutely. If insane. I had bought every single insert that I have for a board game in my basement right now that I have inserts for, I would have paid 10000 plus dollars on inserts. Yep. I have saved all... Like, this printer has paid for itself in dividends just off of my main use case. Yeah, I'm so glad we had this like, conversation because I literally just last night added some stuff to my Amazon cart so I wouldn't forget to buy it. It's like, oh, wait. I could print all this. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Huh? See? Like, if you already have I'm a printer, crazy. that's the easiest thing to do. Just every time you're going to buy something. I need to do a lot be like, of wire management. Can I so print stuff? I will. Wire cons- management, it, they have so many options. So I just sent uh, the best website, uh, things.com it thanks yeah it's in the chat t-h-a-n-g-s dot com it searches all of the printer oh, yeah, 3d yeah. printing like websites feature designer titan and, and finds you them from everywhere maker world prusa thingiverse they're all it's like a good search engine there. for 3d printing nice all it's right. great all right i will let you know if I actually break this thing back open and start trying yeah. to print through this because I haven't I haven't printed through the Ender yet, to be yeah. totally honest. I mean, if you already have it, Ender is really. very popular. There's got to be a lot the of Ender stuff is heard. like the, it was like the number one before Bamboo. Yes, yeah, and yeah. It, it even with the Bamboo out, by the way, like I was saying, the Ender three is in the Creality system and all that. They're one of the most upgradable systems on the market. Yeah. You can't really upgrade the bamboo. You can print you can the upgrade upgrades. the Ender 3. Why would you need to upgrade the bamboo, though? That's fair. But the, the only, you can theoretically make the Ender 3 as good as physically there, possible. In there the is a bamboo, the P1P, that they make for people that want the most bare bones unit that they can mm-hmm. upgrade and customize to their own liking. So that that interesting that is a thing. Interesting, but honestly, okay. it's because the market is so volatile still that they're coming out with new engines, new bands, new ro- like they have rotary engines that can spin so fast, and you can you can build a three D printer that is the best, better than anyone that you can buy out of box. And see, since we're all mm. gonna go to uh, what is it that con in uh, san antonio we got a 3d print um some armor or something i don't know like a shoulder plate <laughs> or or a mask or something <laughs> you know some kind 3D of 3d print some sort of a uh, of the same kind. yeah <laughs> a little oh my god oh you know what we should do mm? oh my gosh we should actually do this we should 3d print uh coasters with the Tap Haven logo on one side and a QR code that scans to our YouTube on the back. Oh, oh there you go. And have a bunch of them in our bag, and we can be like, yeah. "Oh yeah, 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 we do a we do a podcast." And then they're like, "Oh, where is it?" And we just give them a coaster. Yeah, that would be cool. That's Somebody's it. That is coasters. something we should actually do. I'm down for that. You remind me one of the <laughs> wildest things that is uh, I've seen has come out from the multicolor printing is people are just printing like art just posters like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhat 3d but it. mostly 2d works of it's gotta be so art. much material it though. is I, well i mean maybe it not is. if it's only a few layers still really no yeah still it is interesting though this multi-point is everywhere. printed my What's sister called? a mandala that has the glow in the dark filament in it it's a butterfly gentlemen cool. i will look at this later cool. the it is definitely a hole that I will fall down. It is. It is a hole to fall down. Yes. Yeah. But going anybody on, else got anything? I guess. I guess with the uh, with the to kind of like put a bow 
<laughs> on the World of Warcraft talks. Um, Cause that, that, yeah, it's pretty much been a, a, the, like finishing the campaign for me and then doing some more of those dungeons. Raid comes out tomorrow. I'm not ready for it. Yep. I'm Raid comes out either. tomorrow. I don't think I'm high enough eye level either. I haven't been like, I've done a bunch of the heroics, but I've just had really crappy luck with wow, all Eric. Food. You've been doing a lot of the heroics and you've been, been you know, playing a lot more. It's great. It's super great. <laughs> I, mostly, I just had like two or three different nights where I was able to play like gotcha. four hours after bed. And I would just, I tried to do a bunch of the content and tried to just get some. But I've actually just had terrible loot drops for all of my, anytime I, I like got a piece of loot, it was like something that I already had something worst. better for or something yeah. that I had. Like, and I was just like, ah, that's unfortunate. So I haven't really been able to upgrade my eye level too much. I think I'm at like 578 or something like that. Five. That's fair. See, the funny thing is uh, I have a feeling that, yeah, go oh, ahead. Eric and I have uh, such different approaches to this game. Like I'm all about, I'm an altaholic and I'm all about the immersion. <laughs> like, yeah, the raids and the dungeons are there. I'll do them someday, but like, I just want to level up my druid and then I want to unlock the, uh, what is what are they called? The earthen, and I want to convert my paladin to an earthen, and have my first like real dwarf looking dude, and that would be awesome. Like, that's all I really care about. <laughs> Y'all know what that's I'm entirely all. fair, uh, but Y'all know I think what I, I care about. Yeah, tanking. Y'all know what I tanking. Care about. No, not even tanking. You guys know what I care about. I'm here for that fat loot. Oh yeah. I'm here for shiny shit. Mm-hmm. See, for <laughs> for me, I I think I, I said this in a recent podcast, but like World of Warcraft has my favorite mechanic out of any game, and it's the only game to have it. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, there is a minimum viable eye level you need to be able to engage with that mechanic, which I hate all of that. I don't want to do all of that. Uh, but you got it. I would rather just go sh- like be like I did the main story quest. Now I'm gonna wait for the raid, and then I'll do the raid when it comes out, and I'm done. But that isn't a thing, right? Well, there's you have to have a minimum. Well, no, 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 no. But even that has a minimum eye level requirement. Yeah, you have to be like a certain level. And the LFR doesn't come out for a, another like two weeks, right, right, or something right. like that. So if you want to, if you want to do the raid this week, you have to have like a raid. Yeah the eye level for it yeah. and so and like because that's the mechanic i love the most and wow it's like ah i'm shoehorned into an experience you that, sound so upset about it well i mean i to be fair i do not here's the thing i will say i do not enjoy the mythic plus mythic dungeon stuff because if you're not in a pre-made group everybody's just trying to speed through it as quickly as possible. They're doing yeah. stupid stuff. They're just, they don't care about like dying when it's like, they just, they're like, I they're need to finish to this it. dungeon yes. in five minutes too, or less. Yeah. If it's too, if it's anything slower than that, then I'm, I'm out of here. here. I hate life. I'm going to rage at all the other people. <laughs> oh, yeah. I blocked someone the other day in a world quest. Yeah. Like we had a world quest group and the thing's over and they say useless group and i was like all right bro locked (laughs) like i never want to play with that type of person again like see and it's just it's just that is everything below heroic rating like that's the experience for everything below heroic rating and i'm just like i just i don't want to grind to get to heroic rating with that kind of content like it's not fun It's, it's not enjoyable so i'm doing these heroics and i'm like Man, this dungeon is so interesting if we were doing it at Mythic with a fun group that was actually here to try and solve this as a thing. But that is not the experience that you get typically anymore. So wait, so Anthony, are we competing against being tanks now? Nope. Is that is that the situation or am I still tank? No, we're, we're the, it's the new meta, two tanks, one healer. Fair enough. <laughs> To be fair, I think we could three man just about any heroic I've ever seen. That's fair. It would take longer, but it would take longer. 
Yeah. But it, it would definitely no. Be. Like if my druid is high enough level, I will just play my druid. Fair. Like Go I, meet. I've been playing him as a guardian right now, but I like the. Mm. Is it Boomy? Is that the ranged DPS? Moonkin. Yeah. Boomkin. Yeah. See, the thing I like about having a ranged DPS is I can see what's going on instead of staring at the big uh, front end of a boss and your health and your health and going, oh god, yeah. why is it going down so fast? Yeah. 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 Ash said she but, can um, poke things for us in the background. God, the panic that I have when I look at like whenever I think about tanking again. Ugh. I but think man, it's I think it's the reason why I haven't joined like LF LFG yet. Yeah. I think I'm like I'm like part of me is like Have you done I think we're well, gonna have to do this with some Have you done any follower dungeons? Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that, um, should be, that should be okay. This this game has always had this problem. Dude. To be fair, like for anybody that's like listening, is like, dude, shut up. Like this has always been a thing. Like it, it has. <laughs> yeah. Except that previously there was one difficulty for dungeons. Oh yeah. And when there was one difficulty for dungeons, dungeons were as hard as they were, and they were a slow, methodical experience where yep. you had to work you had time through and you had to that think. dungeon. Yeah. You, you were socializing. You were enjoying the content. The boss fights were much slower and the like longer you got to enjoy the fight. Now it is race to the end race of the dungeon the because this content is super, super easy, right? So there's no time to waste. We're going to pull every mob because we aren't here for this it's experience funny. because it's so overly easy. It's so easy. Now you can do a follower dungeon. Tell the computer to lead the way and they will show you how to skip Bro. different mobs and just go Bro. the right way <laughs> when i saw that for the first time i was like wow how, now, how i will say here? i love it I from like a i don't have time dungeon. perspective though for sure yeah. for it's, sure it's so i nice. love it from not having to deal with people perspective but you can that's, really that's solo me. the game now i i yeah. i do like that because like like we've, i've been saying a lot it's all about the mechanics. It's all about riding the bike. I'm enjoying the game because riding the bike is fun. Mm. I have enjoyed the follower dungeons far more than the dungeons with actual people. <laughs> and the only reason I'm not still doing them is because they don't give you raid level. They loot. don't give you loot that will get me into the raid. Yeah. yeah. That is the only reason I wouldn't continue. At least because not yet. At least not yet. Yeah. And, and like, here's the thing. They're just a fun, more fun experience because yeah. if you let them lead, they're just trying to do the dungeon the way it was designed to do. Mm -hmm. And as a healer, I just get to enjoy the dungeon. I heal them the way the dungeon was designed to be healed. Now, arguably, it is super, like, it is brain dead it easy. Is Dude, so wait, no, too. I don't know what happened, but I was tanking and we we're on a boss. I don't, know, I don't even think it was the last boss. It was like the middle boss. And the whole party died except for me. And oh, I hung nice. in there just long enough. It took like another 60 nice. to, to one to two minutes to kill this boss. And I didn't die. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, I was like, what? Why did the computer die? Why did they all die? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's like they, they stood know, in dude. the lava or something. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's one of those things that mm -hmm. the only downside right now for me in World of Warcraft is that. The game is arguably in one of the best states it's been in in a long time. Mm -hmm. But still, some of the mechanics that they have just embedded into the game destroy that experience at some levels. It like, bears the scars of everything from 100%. Cataclysm all the way up to now. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just wish that... like. I would they love didn't to have be able difficulties to actual, for dungeons. It's so I would easy love to, make. to be able to have to have to mark the mage. Yeah. For polymorph, I would ha I would love for the, for me to have to yeah. go ahead and mark somebody for interrupt. And right now, you don't have to do that until mythic plus five. Wow. Right? That's and here's the problem with that. I and here's the thing. I would not care. If Mythic plus five was actually the first thing that you had to do there, the problem is that you are eye level blocked to get to Mythic plus five. So instead mm. of just getting the good experience of that dungeon, 
You it doesn't have occur to until Mythic plus five. You, have you to actually grind. have to grind all the shitty versions of that dungeon a hundred times to before get to you the get the fun version of that. I'm like, see, nah, fuck this. I'm just done. See, Eric, Heroic rating. That's all I want in this game. It is the best experience. It's so easy. It's so fun. It's so fun. I just want to be able to do heroic rating without all the the fluff bullshit that they've added. I I, I need point. to. I just need to get a better understanding of what my rotation is, and I will. I would be. I'd be okay with like rating. I think uh, there is yeah. a healthy amount of it that I'm just like, what have you done to my baby? <laughs> In terms of warrior, but like I I also understand like I am very much a. A purist habit. in that regard. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Like whenever, like I remember somebody was telling, like I was raiding in Cataclysm or something. It was like it was Warlords of Draenor. Or it was Cataclysm or something like that. And they were like, Which yeah, were you like just... the two worst raiding expansions. And they were like, opinion. yeah, just spam, ignore pain. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? And then I pressed the button at max range, rage, and it doubled my health bar like it was my health bar and then it was that weird checkered blue piece and it was my health bar again and i was like what is this what do you mean he's like yeah you're set like you don't take any damage i'm like yeah what really like wrath of the lich king cataclysm warlords of draenor are my three least favorite expansions from a rating perspective insane insane uh miss of pandaria is actually really up there if i just consider the raids but there were so much other there was so much bullshit there was so much other that, stuff wrong dude. with that expansion oh for sure uh, but we dude, can get into one that of the, next time though one of the best things that i've heard the great and powerful thor talk about is that tanks mighty thor. tanks should never be the raid leader you no, can't see anything no. you're staring no. at a giant wall of a, a boss like all the time the best leader is like a healer it. or a deep or a ranged dps it who can should, actually it see what's going on probably a dps either. it should be the healer DPS. i would say it should the mage. be the, the mage um, the mage yeah they have the easiest uh, time getting around the range mage yeah. they, they have invulnerability they can actually see what everyone's doing correct people tell the tank what to do tell the healers what to do whatever mm. hunter's also another good one yeah. hunter mage hunter's good mage um, Anything no. that doesn't have a, essentially, you never want the raid leader to also be the person who has to deal with the primary mechanic in that. Fight. Yeah. Mm. If you but mess also, up, we all die. <laughs> so when I was doing <laughs> mythic raiding for a long time, like when I was actually like the multiple times I've tried to clear content, the best setup is to have a raid leader, uh, an off raid leader, and then a, a leader of each team. Mm. So you have a healer lead, a, a main tank, and you have a DPS lead. That gives you five people max that would ever essentially talk or call, do call outs during a fight. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking to your team, those people, their job isn't to actually like do their main mechanic although they should be good at that. Their they main should. job is to be able to switch between those chats so that they're talking to the correct people. Yeah. So yeah. that essentially, if I'm doing it right, I'm in the main chat and the healer chat, and the only person talking in our healer chat that nobody else can heal hear is our heal lead. And it makes it so much better. It, like that kills it for, like that's the best way to do it. Dude, it makes it. Oh no, I messed really it up, dude. Sorry, I got so distracted because I've had this fidget toy. I was listening Eric. for like a month, <laughs> no and joking. I just discovered a new shape, which is like so unlikely because I thought what? I discovered all the shapes already. I'm so sorry. Well, gentlemen, get yeah. to your fidgets and everything. I think <laughs> I. I I will continue down this road of playing World of Warcraft for a bit, but there is a game that is out right now that we we can talk about later because I don't I don't want to really like bring it Does up. Does it have anything like, to do with oh, Dragon Ball Z? Debate. No, it's not. It's not Wukong. No, no, it's not. Oh, okay. you thought you thought I was a Black Myth Wukong kind of guy. Now, That's I was fair. Gonna say there That's are fair. three games, three things that I'm looking forward to. Okay, go for it. 
and then we'll see if that overlaps with your game. Okay. Yeah. One, yeah. I really want to play Wukong. It looks really good. Looks good. I really want to play Space Marine 2. There it is. Love Warhammer. <laughs> it looks cool. It looks really good. I, I want to play Warhammer. Thor I, I has been talking yeah. a lot of shit about that game. Like, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really want to play it. I love Warhammer 40K. I'm in for Space Marine 2. Let's go. Uh, the third thing is they just had the old school RuneScape Summer Summit. So they <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> uh, there's a yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out, but I, I won't talk about it too much, but go watch the the summer <laughs> summit. There's a lot of cool stuff coming for okay. old school runescape that we can okay. dive into when I when it when it starts coming out later. Okay. But okay. lots of cool stuff on the horizon. Anthony, yeah. anything you excited for on the horizon, buddy, other than that fidget. Dude, I'm just excited to play more WoW. Like WoW is my new fidget toy. I uh I'm trying to basically ignore like thor and other streamers who professionally st play games so they move on real yeah. quickly i'm like okay and you've you moved to around. a different game i'm not paying attention i'm gonna go watch hippo play uh sea of thieves like he has been for the past like 10 years I uh because i can't play that game because it's broken <laughs> and i'm gonna keep playing wow and i'm Good honestly you, doing the same i'm doing the same type of sensory overload where i'm like I'm going to play WoW. RuneScape is on my second monitor. I'm constantly, whenever I have downtime, wow, I click a few RuneScape buttons over there. The <laughs> Dodge, look, look at that. I, 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 I heal, and then when we stop, I'm like, oh, look at that. I can click on this thing over here for a bit. And then I move back, and I'm like, oh, yes, my quest. They're done talking. Move over here. And it's great. Oh. It's great. It's wonderful. You remote workers are so fucking cute. Oh my god. Uh, I wish. Oh. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that really is kind of like how Anthony's talked about it. Essentially, RuneScape has so many different fidget spinner you just mechanics literally do that. I, you I just like click it. 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 It it requires no brain power. Numbers go up, and there's like cool things I'm working towards that I've started doing that actually require. I will say that. As Anthony talked about it last time, he hadn't yet had the like Osu beat rhythm game moment. I oh. have finally gotten to a point in the game where I can start start to begin to engage with that mechanic. And it is it has been really cool to be able to engage with that mechanic. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Okay. Um and essentially it makes a lot of the raid fights in RuneScape. They feel more like a beat rhythm game than like an, a different MMO because you're just auto attacking. And while you're auto attacking, you're switching armor sets in time with the beat of the game. And then you're switching your prayers mm. in time with the beat of the game. Mm. And depending on what happens in the fight, you're essentially going... Auto attack click. Okay, now switch this armor set. You're having to do it all in rhythm because the game runs at 100 beats per minute. And so you have to do all of these things at 100 beats per minute. Like, I kid you not, there are people that play this game with a metronome because you just have to do so many things at <laughs> different rhythms in the game, which is which is really cool. It, it, it does make some of the content really engaging. It is so super cool, dude. Something about, I promise. something about me has an aversion to metronomes. It's yeah. like... You don't need a metronome to do it. You can just do it off of when when, when it's like, use a metronome, I'm like, I don't need training wheels. I can ride a bike. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah. I ain't you no five-year-old. make it work either. I mean, four-year-old, I could ride a bike when I was five. I ain't no three-year-old, I could ride a bike when I was four. I ain't no two-year-old. Don't do this. <laughs> but, uh, Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep going. <laughs> but yeah, I finally got to start engaging with that mechanic last week. I just didn't talk about oh. it. On the, I meant to talk about it on the podcast last week. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized that I pulled out my stream deck that I have this really awesome 3D printed stream deck mount that slides it out and then slides it away. And then it just like sits at a 45 degree angle and it's perfect and I can slide it away. You'll have to send that to Dude, me. it is so sick. Freed up but a lot no, of What are you space. excited for? I am excited to play some Warhammer. Yep. Space it Marine. It looks really fun. Yeah, Space Marine. It does look really cool. I, it I'm looks excited. really good. 
and I've saw I I'm not a multiplayer person. Uh, I've just realized that I'm just not. Um, I I enjoy it. It's just I'm not good. That seems to get in the way of me playing multiplayer games, but the game looks interesting enough on the co-pilot end of it. Sorry, co-op aspect of it that I'm like, okay, I'm game. And then I I know enough Warcraft lore. Sorry, not Warcraft lore. Oh my god, Warhammer lore. Warhammer lore. Yeah, that I already know what they can do with this, and I've and I've heard from the developers and other people covering this that like they are fully supporting the inclusion of more stuff over time and i'm like dude let's you, go we already have we already have the freaking um oh my god what's in my eye Ugh. we already have the freaking galaxy eaters so like we're obviously going to have space bummies we're obviously going to have um well i i feel i don't know if they have traders yet in there but i know we're going to have eventually traders and i know we're going to have the the freaking the fucking boys so <laughs> i'm i'm stoked for what they bring i'm stoked it looks good dude we just need to have a we need to have some game nights every now and then yeah, just like maybe. that could be one of the games Put it in the calendar, or else it's not real. Yes, yep. we would have to like literally have a date night. Yes, yes. indeed, indeed. Because I would totally uh, play Space have... Marine, but I was like, yeah. I'm playing WoW. <laughs> Same. So I'm trying to ignore everything Same. else. Same, dude. There, you have a game, Anthony. I do have a game, and I'm trying to find out what the name of it is. But it is Among Us meets The Office. I have seen <laughs> that. <laughs> wait, wait. I don't know is it what we're there? They're in space suits, and they all have like individual jobs. They look a little depressed inside their suits. I think it looks like you're literally working in an office. Oh no, never, never hmm. mind. I don't know. I haven't actually seen it yet. My wife Ash told me about it. Oh no, I didn't want to play a video. I just wanted to see what the name of the game is. <laughs> That's the, uh, the, game. the absolute worst. But yeah, absolute. like for fans of The Office, it sounds great. It's like. Oh, it's called Dale and Dawson Stationary Supplies. Dale, Dale and so kind of like Among Us, the goal is to find out who is not working, who's yeah, who's, <laughs> who's, the worst worker? who's slacking, who's not doing their work. <laughs> That's funny. it's an eight dollar game on Steam. Nine out and of ten. Out. Okay. That's well right. Very positive. Okay. I love Among Us and I love The Office, so I feel like this could be a great game. I am a, fa- yeah. I am a fan of Among Us. I, I miss the uh, the Nat the Nat the Nat family game nights where we played some Among Us. Man, those were great. Me too. Oh yeah, especially awesome. they were especially great because I played a lot of Among Us. Uh, I played Among Us with my family, and I played Among Us with people that I did martial arts with, and those people really seem to think they know me, which sucks, because they kind of do. Lies. I got to play oh, with shit. Nat's family, <laughs> and they don't know they don't me. Know <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, I got to such a troll. I got to play uh, Secret Hitler with a new group the other oh. day. <laughs> and uh, did you did you, did you make any enemies <laughs> well well b b kind of has played secret hitler we've played like once or oh my twice, god we haven't played secret hitler. not like for real for real though but this group had not not <laughs> i'm sorry but was uh the liar that can't lie there uh um, starts with an h ends with an h no. <laughs> oh, I know who. Because no, 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 no. I would love to play that with her. <laughs> but Can't um, lie. No, so so they did, they didn't really know uh, me and Secret Hitler. By the way, for anybody who hasn't known, I've like I have at least 150 games in Secret Hitler at this point. Jesus Christ, like, he's my I, big. I, I, I can describe it, very well how Eric plays Secret Hitler in, in, in one very succinct sentence. You Boy. click the randomize button. Every <laughs> fucking round is very different. <laughs> he very, he, he puts is, the randomized button in his head and it just plays yeah. it completely different every time. I I feel I so I do do that. <laughs> I do have some unique things that I try to like do, 
But that is, mm. I think, a good strategy. At the beginning of every Secret Hitler, before you know what you are, you should change how you've played it every other time. Otherwise, you know, people just will your start getting your tells. That's fine. Like, that's just how it works. Just change And you can't do it. If you really want to be good at Secret Hitler, you can't just play the same way for one side or the other side or things like that. You, you have to constantly switch up how you play, this how you think fun. you're going to get somebody. Well... I was Hitler both times this night. Fantastic. And uh, I won both times. <laughs> nice. But at the end, we had a case where one of, I had two other fascist party members on my team. We had Fat. like seven or eight people. And one of them made a mistake. And so we had to throw them under the bus. So now there's only two of us. Now, there was one person, two good people, two bad people. I convinced this one other person. And at the end of the, near the end of the game, she was just like, I just, like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to trust the person who's lying here again. And I was like, that sucks for you because you're about to vote for me. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, Dude. I was like, look, you can't let them belittle you like this. You, you can't let them destroy your choice in this game. And then she voted for me and I was like, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, I didn't know you were like this. I was like, like, I've always been like this. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 you were born. I still think that there's a, a secret way to win the game if you're Hitler, and, and that's to kill yourself. If you get yourself killed, you win, because that's like what happened. Hey, that's the the historical win. Dude, I love playing this game with. I have this um, zombie nerf gun that is a two shot, so it has two nerf shots. And the reason I love playing the game with that gun, that nerf gun, is because you have, you can only kill two people in the game, maximum of two people. And yep. people are so wishy-washy, they will like, they will get someone to admit something because they haven't actually committed to voting them off the island, right? Because there's like an assassination option or something like that, if I remember right. It's like, no, no, no. no. If you're going to kill somebody, you got to shoot them with a Nerf gun. So we all know you've actually made the decision. You can't go, oh, so you really are the, the bad guy or are a bad guy. You know, I wasn't going to kill you. I was just talking about how I thought no, maybe I might kill Intent. you. Intent. Intent. Yeah. Like people do that. And it's just like, that's, it's like metagaming. Garbage. It's so annoying. Garbage. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I. Yeah, I like the idea of having a. So Nat, you way never played Secret Hitler. Choice. I've I've played Secret. Oh, okay. Hitler. You I thought you yeah, were yeah. surprised by the fascist thing, so I was like. No, 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 no. Like, what? No, no, no. I just I just forgot that there are different definitions for the positions. I was like, wait. Yeah. What? And then I was like, oh wait. Yeah, yeah. I'll just never forget that someone that Eric and I used to work with, uh, he printed out the game before you could buy it, like before yeah. anybody had it so no one knew about this game wow. we're at a gaming bar in atlanta where there's like board games oh. and video games and all whatever you can imagine and we're playing it's getting really heated i yell as loud as my as loud as i can basically you effing fascist uh waitress is walking wow. by she stops turns the whole like wow. restaurant's just looking at us like is there about to be Bro, a fight? Are you okay? And it's like you we're all right? just like we're we're all just like really into the game. Like, you're a, you're a fascist. Like get this guy out of here. Kill him. Kill him. And everyone's just like, what is happening? They <laughs> before they knew they had no clue. The, the roughest one, the roughest one I've ever played was when I was playing with my family. Was oh, me, that, yeah. my mom. My I sister, don't play with my, my sister, family anymore. <laughs> my niece. And uh, uh, my nephew and a few others, oh. we were sitting at the table, and it is like the first turn, and I get two fascist cards from my mom, who was just voted in, and I was like, 
put it down and I was like, I didn't get a choice. They gave me two fascist cards. And they looked at her and they were like, what did you, what did you get? She was like, I gave him a choice. <laughs> Dead pan, straight up, first play of the game. Wow. I gave I him a choice. I was like, what are you talking about? Mom, you're a fascist. What? <laughs> She's like, oh man. Nope. Gave That's really choice. good. I was like, this, this monster. God, and then I gave then him my, a choice. My, my stepdad, he didn't quite understand the rules of the first game. <laughs> so he thought you were just supposed to lie the whole time, but he was a good person. And I was like, no. <laughs> it, That's not those, how it works. Those oh two God. events devolved this game into madness. <laughs> and it was the wildest game I've ever played. Because we had one person who was just playing by his own rules. My mom, who was obviously lying, but everybody was like, if she just learned the rules, she's obviously not she's lying. Fine. I was like, it's fine. I was like, this is wild. Man, that sounds awesome. It's rough being the person who shares all their <laughs> hobbies and then realizes that you are surrounded by people who have grown you into the person that you are. The oh. <laughs> It's truly unfortunate. Well, that's nuts. with that, I guess that's a pretty good place to place to I end think it. So lots. We'll have more think whiskey good. and games next next week. Uh, like, subscribe, comment below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all that good shit. Yeah, all the good shit. And we'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye. Who's Roll the outro. <laughs>